Thank you for coming for the very last session in the conference. Uh, my name is Anders Saki. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat Crypto Team. And I will talk a, a bit about um, API and API maintenance and library maintenance. So, and uh, sorry, I don't have much time, so I will talk 20 minutes non stopping. If you have questions, please take note and ask me later. Thanks. Uh, so, this is my agenda. I will talk a bit about uh, ABI breakage, ABI versioning, uh, map files, and finally about the two ABI map to automate the, the update of map files. So, ABI breakage. Uh, wh what is ABI breakage? It's an incompatible change made to the uh, API. Uh, so, uh, software depending on that API or ABI uh, will uh, be broken. So, imagine in the context of an operation, operational system, uh, it would be something like a broken package. And uh, all the packages depending on that broken package would have to be changed, at least recompiled so that it, it w would inco incorporate the changes and uh, be able to run again. So, uh, some, exam so some examples of uh, what uh, would break the ABI. For example, if you remove one, exist uh, one exported symbol, it would break the ABI because any software depending on that uh, API would just break. Uh, if you change arguments, that could break during runtime, for example. Uh, it wouldn't change the uh, exported symbols, but uh, it changed the behavior and it could break it during runtime. The same thing for change of exported symbols. Um, it could break during uh, runtime. So what we want is to have one stable ABI, meaning that everything that worked before has to continue to work. Uh, so old uh, applications compiled against the old version of the library should be able to run against the new version of the South problems. And uh, so we should consider only the documented behavior. So if the user is using some internal API or using in a, some undocumented manner, then he is not covered by the contract. So he's on his own. Uh, this is to be fair with the developer. Okay. So we want to make incompatible changes without breaking the ABI. Uh, how can you do that? So the idea is that you have to keep all uh, symbols that uh, all APIs you had before uh, in the new version of the, the library. So here comes the ABI versioning. So you can keep uh, more than one version of one implementation, one API. So the first idea to version the ABI would be to use different file names. So for every new uh, li uh, version of the library, you would create a new uh, DSO file. And so this is not uh, really not smart because you would have to have all the uh, files for each version of the library. Otherwise, you would break some software depending on old versions of the library. So uh, imagine this situation where you have an application depending on two libraries, each of them depending on the same, uh, on a different versions of the same third library. Uh, when you load this in memory, you don't really know what would be the behavior, but th that, because that would depend on the, uh, uh, what the li uh, dynamic linker would find during uh, lookup. So uh, it's a problem. So we, what we do is to use symbol versioning. So we add version information to the symbols in the binaries. So you can keep more than one version of one implementation or one API. So uh, the idea is to create version nodes where you can uh, put the list of the symbols that were introduced in that version. And so you put the, uh, in the binary you will have the symbols associated with the version information. And you create a hierarchy. So uh, if one uh, version node has a predecessor node, uh, it means that uh, it supports all the symbols that were available in the uh, version before. So it keeps uh, the compatibility. So how do I add version information to my symbols? So you have to create a version script, also known as a map file. 
and declare there the version node with the list of all symbols uh, that uh, that version introduced and pass the map file to the uh, linker using dash dash version script. This is all valid only for GNU, uh, GNU linker. So um, let's talk a bit about the map files. So uh, this is a map file. Uh, it, this is the name of the version node. It's also the uh, version information that will be uh, added to the symbols introduced in, in this version. So it's an arbitrary string, but it's a good idea to put some reference of your library and version so that you can control the version of that. Uh, global and local are uh, defined as scope of visibility of the, the uh, symbols. So uh, using map files, you can also control the visibility of the symbols. So um, you, you can define exactly the set of symbols you want to export. So uh, if you want to export a symbol, you have to put it in the global scope. Uh, there is this uh, special symbol, uh, the asterisk uh, means uh, catch all wildcard. Uh, it will basically catch all symbols that are not explicitly added to any uh, version, uh, version node. So uh, all the uh, symbols that you are not adding to the map file will, will be hidden uh, uh, for the, the, the application. It will not be visible. Uh, this is just a predecessor. It's not really necessary in the map file, but it's a good idea to uh, keep this information so that, so that you can uh, see what was the original uh, version in which you based the new version. So yeah, uh, this is how it adds the version to the symbol. It matches the name you put in the map file with your implementation, and it will add the version uh, information to the symbol. So when you compile it, you get your shared library with the version information added to the symbol. And so how do I make a compatible change? Uh, if uh, you are making changes to the code that are really compatible, then you can just do it and change it. Uh, it will not affect the, the behavior or shouldn't. Uh, and the new version will work just as the old version and the old applica uh, the applications linked against the old version of the library will continue to work because it will find the uh, symbols with the, the old version there. You can optionally add one uh, version node, like empty version node, just to <laughs> Uh, explicitly uh, say that you are not adding any other uh, APIs in this version. Uh, adding APIs, this is probably the most common uh, change you want to make to your library. So you are adding new APIs. Uh, so I added some other uh, uh, API. So I have to add one uh, new version node uh, containing that symbol to be exported. Uh, and the new version of the library will contain both the old symbols and, and the new symbols that you added there. So how do I keep multiple versions of the same API? This is uh, the most complicated uh, case, let's say. Uh, so you can use this assembly pseudo instruction, like the singver instruction, to uh, create aliases for your implementation. So. What I'm saying here is that uh, this uh, new func is uh, actually a uh, new implementation for that uh, API that was available before. So I add that uh, symbol to the new version node and uh, you have to pay attention to the at marks. If you, have, uh, if you put a single at mark, it means that it will be visible only during uh, runtime. So new applica uh, applications being uh, compiled against uh, or linked against the new uh, library will not see these uh, symbols marked with a single at mark, only with a double at mark. We usually say that the uh, symbols with double at are the uh, default implementation because it's what the, the linker will see when linking the application. So what happens if I omit the first one? first assembly pseudo instruction. Uh, 
what would happen is that uh, both uh, new and old implementation would get the, the double at mark, and so the linker would uh, be a bit confused. So <laughs> actually, it would use this, uh, the first symbol uh, it found for that, that uh, first version found. So it could be the old or the new one. And if I omit the second one, what would happen is that the new uh, implementation would be caught by the uh, catch-all wildcard and wouldn't be uh, exported at all. It would be uh, only in local scope. So you have to keep both to have two versions of the same API. Uh, now, how do I make incompatible changes and keep the ABH stable? Uh, you basically have to keep all the old uh, symbols, all the symbols that were available before uh, in, during runtime. Uh, the important part, part is that it should be available in runtime. So uh, to make incompatible changes, the techniques are similar to keeping uh, two versions of the same uh, API. So uh, you added, uh, you changed the implementation. So in this case, I changed the argument. So this is an API break. So I add a new version node containing that, uh, that symbol and I use the uh, assembly pseudo instructions and I use the single at mark in the old version and the double at mark in the new version so that the linker will find the new version when linking. Uh, to deprecate symbols safely, uh, uh, what you have to do is to keep it available during runtime. So you can use the same technique and put the single at mark uh, to, uh, to the function like uh, with a single one and uh, you add a new version node without that symbol. Uh, uh, obviously, if you added some API, those added APIs would be present here in the, this new version node. Um, but the idea is that the deprecated one will not be here. And what would happen is that the symbol would get the single at mark, so it, it will be available only during runtime. So when uh, new applications are being linked by, with the new version, it will not see this symbol. But uh, applications linked against the old version will still find this, this symbol available during runtime. So it, you will not break them. If you really want to break the ABI, uh, meaning that you are completely uh, uh, releasing a new version that is completely un incompatible, then what you should do is get all the uh, symbols ever exported and merge together in a new uh, version node. So you will have a single new version node. And this makes clear that uh, uh, these, all these symbols in the new version are not compatible with the old ones. So once you start versioning the symbols, you have to update your map file for each added API. Uh, if you forget to add uh, the, some added API to the map file, you, it won't be exported and won't be available at all. Uh, even worse, if you uh, accidentally remove some, symbol, some exported symbol from some version, then you are basically breaking your ABI. So you have to uh, do this with care, the updates to the map files. So that's why uh, we wrote the ABI map. A uh, tool, uh, what is it? It's a tool to automate the maintenance of the map files. So you provide all the symbols to be exported to the tool uh, together with the old map file and it will update the map file uh, automatically. And it can also detect if you uh, haven't uh, removed some uh, symbol accidentally to avoid the ABI breakage. Uh, so what's the workflow? You provide the list of uh, uh, all the symbols uh, to be exported to the tool plus the old map file and you will get the map file updated with the symbols uh, added to the new version node. So um, there, these are the commands available. Uh, with new, you create a new map file, update, you change with the existing one, check, just checks the syntax of the map file to see if nothing is wrong. Version just prints the two version information. So uh, I'm afraid of live uh, demos, so I uh, 
put a static one, and the, the colors are artificially added, so you won't see these pretty colors there. Uh, so what I'm doing here is providing one symbol to the ABI map with uh, the new common and specifying the uh, version node that I want to create. So it will just create the, the version node with the added symbol. Uh, I can update one existing map file. So in this case, I'm providing, uh, remember, you have to uh, provide uh, all the uh, symbols to be exported, including the old ones. So what it did here, uh, ah, you ignore the warnings. It, this is something that maybe I should remove. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so what you get is a new version node uh, with the new symbol added there. The, the two uh, try to guess what's the name of the new version you want to create. So in this case, it, uh, it uh, understood as an incremental change. So it uh, just incremented the minor uh, number that in the version. So in this case, I forgot to uh, provide some of the symbols. And it would detect that you accidentally removed some APIs and would abort the operation. Uh, in, you all, in this case, I added all the symbols that I had before, plus one, and I specified one uh, existing version node to be updated. So it, will, uh, it can uh, change existing uh, version nodes. So what it did there is to add that symbol to that existing version node. Uh, you can also uh, explicitly say that you want to break the ABI with the dash dash allow break, ABI break, and uh, it allows you to remove things, but what it will do is to merge all, all exported symbols in a single new release, and again, it tries to uh, guess your, your version that you want to, to add there and increment the major uh, uh, version. Um, I, um, there is this uh, final, uh, dash dash final option that uh, marks um, the version node with one uh, special uh, comment. It's just a trick for the two to understand that these, uh, this version node shouldn't be changed anymore. So if you mark uh, in the map file with this uh, released comment uh, and try to change it, it will uh, uh, give you this error message saying that you already released that, you shouldn't be changing. Um, this is just to uh, show uh, how the check works. So I, ha I removed one semicolon and run the check against the library and it gives you some error message. So the tool has some limitations. It doesn't support adding uh, existing symbol to a new version. Uh, this is required if you want to keep uh, two versions of the same API. So this is a limitation, it's an improvement I have to do. Uh, ex extraction of symbols is out of scope. So you have to have a way to parse your source code and provide the symbols to be exported. Um, the detection of the ABI breakage is out of scope. Uh, what I do is uh, just uh, check if you are not removing symbols. If you really want to check if the ABI is being broken, I strongly recommend this uh, other lib, uh, the libabigail or the ABI diff tool to check if you are not breaking the ABI. Uh, the integration of the two could be easier, so uh, please consider contributing. <laughs> Uh, so the summary, uh, breaking ABI can be catastrophic for uh, OS, obviously. <laughs> uh, so what is a stable ABI? Everything that worked before has to continue to work. So basically you have to keep all the symbols ever exported forever. And uh, symbol uh, versioning associates version information to each API. Map files is how you define the version nodes and uh, uh, it also can be used to uh, limit the visibility of the, the symbols in your library. And the ABI map is a tool that you can use to automate the maintenance of map files. Uh, if you need further information, I recommend reading this uh, paper. So you can get the code in this address, and that's all. Thank you. Do you have questions?
Yes. So Yeah, the question is if that only works for C and not for C++. Um, so it theoretically would work with C++, but you have to provide uh, the, the whole symbol to be exported. So um, yeah, I, I would say that the tool is more suitable for C. So yes, maybe I should uh, make some improvement in this area. Yes? Oh, okay. Uh, the question is if I recommend uh, changing or bumping the SO name with uh, uh, incompatible changes. Yes, uh, I think the best way to maintain is to always bump the SO name when you make incompatible changes. So if you are breaking the EBI, then you should definitely change the SO name. Uh, that uh, would be kind of related with uh, that uh, ABI, al allowing the ABI breakage. So you are creating a new version node with all the symbols exported there and bump the SO name. Uh, so uh, all the tricks with that uh, uh, assembly pseudo so instruction was to uh, allow you to keep the SO name without uh, and uh, make the, the incompatible change so uh, that the new version would be still compatible with the old one. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's better. If you are making incompatible changes, just uh, bump the SEO name and, and recreate the map file. But, uh, yeah, those are tricks. How can you keep the SEO name and not break the ABI? Uh, yeah, so, and make the changes. Yes? So the, the question is uh, that the linker uh, already has some better way to uh, deal with different SO names. Uh, sorry? In Solaris. In Solaris, yeah. So um, this, uh, the ver uh, symbol versioning scheme of the uh, new uh, linker was based on the Solaris one. And all these tricks, I think, is only available in Linux, uh, in the GNU linker. So um, the question is if I consider the, the, the Solaris way of dealing with the SO names. Uh, no, I haven't considered that. So I, everything that I wrote was uh, for the new linker. That was the, the thing that I wanted to support. So sorry, I, I don't uh, know about the, the whole difference about the Solaris uh, linker and how it deals with the symbols. Yeah. yeah, so the question is uh, that uh, in C++ probably the only thing you have to do is to mango the symbol version into the symbols. And I think, yes, that, that's the way you do. Uh, as far as I know, when you compile the, the C++, uh, code, the, all the symbols get uh, all the classes and stuff mangled, so you get really big uh, symbols, uh, and you could uh, uh, definitely mango the symbol version there. So yes, in C++, you could simply mango the uh, version information to the symbols, and uh, that would solve the problem basically in the same way, uh, symbol version. Oh, okay, the, so. Okay, uh, so uh, it was not really a question, but more uh, answer for the other question. So you. Yeah, sorry, I, I haven't.
So, um, sorry, I'm out of time. So thank you for attending. And yeah, that's it.